This video covers Advanced Higher Biology Unit 2, Organisms and Evolution, specifically Key Area 1 Fit Techniques for Field Biologists, Identification and Taxonomy. So we'll explain how organisms are identified once they're sampled, discuss the use of taxonomy in field studies, give the uses of phylogenetics, and justify the use of model organisms. When a researcher discovers a new species of any organism, they'll often publish a report listing the features of the newly found organism, so physical traits, uh, behavioural traits, um, and they will then uh, file these reports together to form classification guides, biological keys, or other texts that can help other researchers who are not familiar with that organism identify it. It's often useful to analyse the DNA and proteins from this newly found organism as well, as it can lead to the identification of new genes and products for research. When classifying organisms, we can use either taxonomy or phylogenetics. Taxonomy involves the identification and naming of organisms and the classification into groups based on shared characteristics, such as uh, their morphology, um, the, uh, maybe their dentition, so what teeth they have, and maybe part of their um, reproduction, whether or not they have hair, things like this. This can lead to situations such as in the order Carnivora, where most members have become adapted to eat meat and uh, possess carnassial teeth, which are sharp and good at tearing meat. There are, however, members of the order Carnivora, such as raccoons and some bears, which are omnivorous and still have these teeth. And then there's those such as the panda, which are carnivora when described by their dentition, but are actually herbivores in real life. So carnivora doesn't mean carnivore necessarily. We've then got the option of phylogenetic, which is a study of the evolutionary history and relationship among organisms or groups of organisms. Phylogenetics is changing the traditional classification of many organisms. It uses heritable traits such as morphology, but also includes DNA sequences, protein structures, and uh, several other things to make inferences about an organism's evolutionary history and create a phylogeny or a phylogenetic tree. These trees, as demonstrated here, are a diagrammatic hypothesis of the relationship between different organisms. So you can see um, we have similarities in a nucleotide sequence substitutions between humans and monkeys, there being very few substitutions, and within this group here there's very few substitutions, and you can compare it across um, different groups. Genetic evidence can reveal relatedness that is obscured by divergence or convergence. So sometimes very um, genetically different organisms which um, speciated long, long ago can look very, very similar, such as um, shark um, and whales look very, very similar, even though one is a mammal and one is a fish. So they've converged on a similar body design, but through phylogenetics, we can tell that they're actually evolutionarily very distant from each other. Similarly, if you look at mam uh, mammalian groups, there's a massive diversity in um, in what features and morphology these uh, different individuals can have. So for example, humans, whales, as we mentioned before, and horses look very different, but actually are all mammals. Familiarity with taxonomic groups allows us to use predictions and inferences um, based on model organisms. So these are ones that are either very easily studied or have just been very well studied in the past. Some important ones include the bacterium E. coli, which again is a bacterium, it's very easy and very cheap to grow. The flowering plant Aridopsis, which genetically has been very, very well studied. Nematode C. elegans, the arthropod Drosophila melanogaster, which is a fruit fly, and several chordates such as mice, rats, and zebrafish, Xenopus. Information obtained from these species can then be applied to other species that are maybe more difficult to study directly. So if you wanted to um, do a study on a mammal, you would choose something like a mouse or a rat over a panther, because it maybe costs a bit more to keep 
50 panthers than it does 50 mice. They're easier to keep, um, etc. So these were our key intentions. We know that identification of an organism in a sample can be made using classification guides, biological keys, or analysis of DNA and proteins. Organisms can be classified both by using taxonomy and phylogeny. Taxonomy includes the identification and naming of organisms and their classification into groups based on share characteristics. Classically, this is done based on morphology. Phylogenetics is the study of the evolutionary history and relationships among individuals or groups of organisms. Phylogenetics is changing the traditional classification of many different organisms. It uses heritable traits such as morphology, but also DNA sequences, protein structures, and it makes inferences about an organism's evolutionary history to create a phylogeny, which is a phylogenetic tree, a diagrammatic hypothesis of the relationship to other organisms. Genetic evidence can reveal relatedness, which is obscured by divergent or convergent evolution. Familiarity with the taxonomic groupings allows us to predict uh, and make inferences about the biology of um, using better known model organisms. These model organisms are ones which are easily studied or have been well studied. These include things like the bacterium E. coli, the flowering plant Aridopsis thalania, the nematode C. elegans, the arthropod Drosophila melanogaster, which is the fruit fly, mice, rats, zebrafish, uh, which are all chordates. It's been very important to use these in the advancement of modern biology. Information obtained from them can be applied to other species which are more difficult to study directly.